I didn't play heads and I took all the hits I needed to take and, and ran when I needed to run when I was playing with with uh, fractures in my back. So uh, now that they're healed, I don't expect to revert back to, and play any, any differently. So what, how, when you say fractures, can you be more specific? What was the I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if I don't know the anatomy of it. All I know is I had some fractures in there. Would there be any hesitancy on your part, knowing that, wow, if I take another shot like that? I mean, no. does that have a... No psychological part of your game at all? Or you no, I've been, I've been around this game too long. Sure. Yeah. It's, uh, I know that you can't play that way. You can't survive that way. Do you feel like you're 100% right now? Getting there. Uh, like I said earlier, um, my conditioning needs to come back. So I'm working hard in practice and before and after to uh, to bring that back. Now my, my quickness, my agility, my speed, I feel pretty close. Uh, that obvi Those obviously won't be optimal or maximized until my conditioning is all the way there. Um, but that's the only part of my game. My arm feels really good. My motion feels good. The, my release feels good. Uh, my arm strength is back. Um, you know, being able to, to twist my hips and, and get all that power from my core. So, uh, as my condition, my conditioning is kind of that last thing, and uh, that's just the nature of the injury. And they, they had to rest me completely. I couldn't have done anything to keep my conditioning up while I was sitting out. So, uh, as I work on that this week and as kind of get that back, I imagine over these next couple of weeks, then I'll be 100%. But I mean, as far as feeling physically good and walking around in everyday life, yeah, 100%. Knowing that you couldn't go against Utah State and that the plan was to bring you back for Oregon State, did you use that time to prepare yourself and maybe break down more game planning, more film? More no, more I, cause, no, because if anything would have happened to Taysom in that game, I was going in. And so I had to prepare for Utah State as I would any other opponent. And so, no, there was no extra preparation for Oregon State. But it's nice to play on a Saturday. <laughs> you know, you feel like you, the, the, a lot of pressures and air has been let out and you can kind of breathe and uh, have full time to prepare for an opponent, which we have. it seems like we haven't had in forever. And uh, that's so that's nice. Do you have any regrets about trying to play those two games? Not at all. I mean, that's just who you are. Yeah, no regrets. You can't look back and it's, it's in the past and um, there's no second guessing and hindsight's 2020. So... Uh, I know a lot of newspapers can be sold and a lot of websites can be hit, you know, speculating and talking about all that stuff. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, I give it my all. And uh, sometimes you don't come out on top. And I sleep good at nights knowing that I gave it everything I had. Will this change your playing style going into the third? Sorry if you can ask that. Yeah, no, um, no, not at all. I mean, uh, uh, for example, RG3, I, I'm learning more and more, and obviously I keep getting banged up uh, and I saw what happened to RG3 yesterday it was a play where he could have thrown it away or, or ran out of bounds and so uh, situationally I'll have to do that but if I'm called on to, to run the ball and draw or on option or whatever I'm gonna run how I know how to run but in those I guess those unnecessary hits uh, again using example RG3 he didn't have to take that hit down there um, and, and there were some, there's been times that I've taken hits that I don't have to take um, so I'll avoid those moving forward. That's really been my goal since day one. Now it's a hard skill to learn uh, because you've been reacting naturally and reacting a certain way for so long. Um, but if you see any difference in my play, that may be the only difference and it'll be a minor one. You filled the role of mentoring Taysom playing on the field. Now what's your role in mentoring him having to sit out? Yeah, I've been through season ending injury and rehab before. and. Uh, I mean, as much as he's around, I, I know that surgery kind of knocks you out. And so I wish him a speedy recovery and hope that he can get back around the team and, and uh, doing what he loves to do, which is playing the game of football. And even though he'll be sidelined physically for a while, I hope to, that he remains in it. And I want to see him at practice every day and have him around because he's a great guy. Uh, he's, a, he's an important player to this team and a leader. And uh, so I wish him the best. You are playing a top 10 team, kind of, right. kind of overlooking all this, but talk about that and what it means to the team. That's a great opportunity. We are very excited. and. Uh It'll be interesting because uh, obviously we've taken our lumps and uh, we have two losses and they're undefeated this far in the season. But as uh, as I look and study their defense, I mean, their best players that we faced last year, uh, number 14, number 95, and number 14, the cornerback, number 95 on the defensive line, um, a couple of their linebackers are the same guys I remember seeing up in, uh, oh, help me out, are they Corvallis. playing Corvallis or Beaverton? In Corv same guys that I saw across the ball in Corvallis. So um, they've obviously improved and gotten better. We feel the same thing, even though, you know, we lost a couple close games in tough venues. Uh, we feel like we're a much improved team. So uh, it'll be a fun game. It's a great opportunity for us to play uh, on a national spotlight against a top ranked team uh, in homecoming. So we're just excited to compete and, and ready to play.
Did you throw the ball as well as you threw it? Yes. In fact, that was the, that was the first thing to come back. Once, once kind of the pain was eliminated in my back and, and the strength was back there, uh, that was the first thing to come back was uh, getting that power back from my core and the arm strength. Um, what has been the slowest coming back is my side to side agility and movement and then uh, a acceleration and burst off the ball, which obviously is important in pocket movement and escapability and things like that, which are a big part of my game. But um, the throwing aspect was what came back first. Riley, looking back uh, when you came out of high school uh, with this mission age change thing, right. do you think you would have uh, gone on your mission first or played a year? I, I probably would have just gone. I think so. Um, I turned, yeah, I turned 18 like a week after I graduated and then I think that would have been a nice time. Yeah. Uh, thinking back on it, and then you get back as a 20-year-old kid, and I probably would have redshirted, which would have been nice. I've kind of been thrown into the mix every year and not really had a year to sit back and develop and learn the game, which is fine. I mean, that, that's uh, you'd rather play, really, to be honest. But um, uh, I, I think it's uh, – I don't know what impact it will have, but I think that's good, getting them out at, at 18 and getting back at 20 and then ha having five to play for.